Let's watch that video. Let's watch it now. Last time, let's watch that video. Let's watch it now. Hello, and welcome to my channel. In today's episode, I am describing how I repaired an HP 9025E Office Jet Pro inkjet printer. But first, we give thanks to the products or services that make these videos possible. Instant coffee crystals and mini chocolate donuts. Yum, yum. My friend Karen called and asked me to look at her malfunctioning printer. So I looked at it, and this is what I saw. HP 9025E. The display said tray number two was not really a tray, but a jar, and the tray was closed. So I opened and closed it a few times, but the tray was still a jar. Finally, I removed the tray and found these two large teeth in the back, with one snapped off. First, I tried to buy a new tray from HP. The model of the printer is 1G5M0A. The part number is 1MR66-40004. I looked in the HP website forum for this printer, and noticed other complaints and a message from HP to call them about it. I entered the serial number on the HP website and they said it was out of warranty, so there was nothing they could do. Their automated system suggested that I go to the HP Parts website instead. HP Parts showed tray number one in their parts database, which is different and has a different part number but it is not available. The tray 2 part number was not to be found. Next I looked at eBay and I found a couple. It was about $40 delivered for a used tray. But I was concerned about the tooth design and figured it would just happen again, maybe in shipping. For some reason I thought of the rabbit in Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Brave knight, if you do doubt your courage, all your strength come no further, for death awaits you all with nasty, big, pointy teeth. What an eccentric performance. So I decided to try and reattach, plus strengthen the tooth. I did both teeth because I figured either one could snap off if someone pulls the tray out at anything other than a manufacturer-approved angle. I decided to apply steel wire and JB weld to the weak areas of the plastic where the teeth joined the tray. First I measured the tooth locations and built a brace out of pine wood. Then I drilled through the webs to insert some steel wires as reinforcement. The drill bit used was 5 64ths. I did not think about making a video until after the tray was fixed, so the following is a movie magic moment reenactment of the drilling process just offset to either side. And now here is a reenactment of the motion used to insert the steel wires. The wire size is 16 gauge, and it measured 1 16th inch in diameter. It's galvanized wire, so I sanded it to rough it up a little, to give it some bite with the epoxy, and cut 4 7 8 inch lengths of wire. Next I mixed some epoxy, primed the channels, inserted the steel wires, and filled it all in. Then I applied scotch tape as a kind of release film. I taped it into the pine brace and let it cure for two days, no touching. After two days it popped out easily. I removed all the tape, then scraped off and sanded any squeeze out or ripples level with the surrounding plastic. After inserting the tray, the display said all is well. I made some test prints and declared victory. 
In retrospect, the pine brace might have been more complex than I needed. I spent about 30 minutes on that. From what I can see, everything is right angles, so a weight, some tape, wax paper, and the back of an infrequently used dresser or drawer up against a wall might have worked out just as well, as long as it was left undisturbed to cure. The next video will be a surprise because I'm lagging on it, so I'll be very surprised if I get it done. So I might skip it for now and go back to the Le Potato series. I'm not sure yet. As always, thanks for watching. Giant Bobcat!